All right, so in the last video, um, we looked at nature and instead of thinking about bottles and pears and, and how everything is sort of different, we wanted to think about how everything's the same. And so we reduced everything to just a line, a single line that's sort of connected. And again, that allows us to get um, all the different parts of our composition to feel like they belong together. Like rather than isolating at the beginning, rather than saying, oh, that's a pear, that's a, that's a bottle, they're different. How do we see them as the same thing? So we reduced or distilled down nature to just line. Okay, so then as we progress through the drawing, we do the same thing, we can do the same thing with tone. So here I've done a drawing, the same setup. Uh, I've done a little bit more drawing um, just to give us a little bit more of an um, armature to put the tone down on. Sort of mapped out um, where the objects are and it's lights you may not be able to see, but I've um, indicated where the principal shadows are as well. And then I look up there and I've got all these different uh, colors and values going on up there. But again, I want to reduce. I want to distill down and say, okay, well, of all of that, of all those, um, we're just dealing with value, um, obviously not getting into color right now, although the same issue would apply with color. Um, but if we look at the, all those values, all those myriad values out there, how can we distill them down? How can we reduce them to just the essential ones? Because then maybe I can get all these different values to start connecting with one another and I can see how everything again is related just as we did with line. All right, so an easy way to do that is just to put a limit on you, almost like a tonal scale that we did before. Um, but I'm going to reduce it even more. I'm going to reduce what I see to three values. Uh, a principal light, a principal dark, and then a principal midtone. So just three values. How can I look up there and take all that complexity but just reduce it to three essential tones? And most compositions in nature, like when you're looking at nature, you can reduce most, comp most uh, compositions to just three values at the beginning. Um, you know, sometimes, depending on what you're doing, maybe one or two more values, but really, you can distill way down to three values and give yourself a pretty clear idea of how things are going to group visually in your composition. Okay, so, so looking up here, I'm just going to squint and I'm going to try to um, get a lot of the details out and just see if I can reduce things to three values. And I'm going to start with the dark. So when I look up there, I squint and I see how you know, this is different from this, which is different from this, which is different from this and this, but visually they connect or they join when I when I squint a little bit. So the shadow on a white bottle is kind of like the cast shadow on this linen cloth, which is kind of like the shadow on the side of that um, that block. So they're they're all essentially connected at the beginning. So I just let them connect at the start. So here I come in with my um, dark tone and yeah, sort of late in a shadow shape here already. So I just let that, it's kind of like doing those, uh, those value exercises that we did at the very beginning with value, where we just let, we let objects connect together, uh, where we put two, um, two objects together of like value and just saw them as one shape. That's kind of what we're doing here. So the bottle is connecting to its cash shed on the ground plane, it's also connecting visually to the shadow on the block, which comes over and it meets the shadow on the pair. And again, they're not, they're not, uh, you know, they're not the exact same values, but they're close enough that we can see them as the same. And it connects to this cast shadow over here on the ground plane. This comes up and connects to the cast shadow that this bottle is throwing over here. Shadow on the bottle connects with the shadow on this blue pair up here, the blue lemons, right? <clears throat> Comes over. So I see this dark is almost like a it's almost like a river that's running through the picture. Right? It's not it's not like these isolated elements. So I'm almost doing with the value what I did with the line, just kind of connecting, let it sort of run and connect. So this connects with this, connects with this. How do I you know, how do I get these things to group and, and feel like they have some kind of uh, joining or relationship? So here, so it's like a, I'm kind of 
kind of finding my way around the composition with just the darks there. And I can come in and with my stump and just get a little bit more of a, uh, a feeling of real dark and also just connect. And, and this is really, again, um, it's really important at this stage to try to get beyond the object. So I'm making a point of, of like running my drawing tool, this paper stump, between the objects. I'm not constantly delineating um, the edges of things or like how the pair separates from whatever's behind it. You know, I'm, uh, I'm choosing to sort of see how things are actually connecting with one another because that's what happens visually. Like values, when they come up against one another, even though they're on different objects, will connect visually. That's how we read the world. So it's nice at the beginning to actually allow yourself to make that absolutely happen on, on the page. All this sort of running, connecting. So there are my darks, there's my river of dark that sort of runs through. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at my midtone because the white is gonna be, my light value is just gonna be the white of the paper, right? So, so I do the same thing with the, with the midtones. I say, okay, well, um, you know, up there, big picture, I'm gonna allow, even though this is different from the white of the, um, of the bottle, though that's close enough so that that's gonna be the light area, so, but, uh, but this will be a mid-tone, the cup will be a mid-tone, the bottle is going to be a mid-tone, uh, the background is going to be a mid-tone, this gray background over here is going to be a mid-tone. So then I come in and, uh, and also this will, be, this will be a mid-tone, this purple over here. So I'm going to uh, plot in that mid-tone. And again, at the, you know, as we talked about with the last exercise, when you're blocking in these tones, you want to you want to create a tone that's that's as even as possible. You know, make a real real statement with the shape of the tone. And make the tone um, you know, make the tone quiet. That just don't have a lot of Variation. You're really trying to, to stick with the idea of, of just three tones in this, in this setup. So this, so the mid-tone here on the back, it comes in and it moves right into this um, vessel here. And you know, if you in doing this, if you um, if you lose uh, lose the idea of a particular shape a little bit, it's okay. It's it's um, it's actually better at this stage to to make sure that you're getting things to connect and join. And if you lose the sense of an object here or there, that's that's all right. Um, we're sort of sacrificing that sometimes for the the greater good of of seeing how everything is connected. You can always come back and reclaim objects later. So this connects with this. So this bottle comes down and actually connects with the purple of this paper. So I just run my tool between those two. All right, so those are my, oh, and, and the pair over here is also, and the pair is going to, the pair is going to connect. I lost a little bit of my, Here, here is going to connect to that. Okay, so there I've got my my kind of river of midtones in. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see. Uh, I'm not going to put in my lights, but I'm going to see like where my lights connect. I'm going to let them absolutely connect. So here with this bottle, I'm going to just sort of get rid of my outline because the background behind it is a light as well. So I'm just going to get rid of get rid of that outline. Get rid of the outline here on this um, on this block where it meets the the, um, the linen ground plane behind it. So wherever light meets light, it's actually dark up here. So 
So again, it's like the um, like the first tonal exercise that we did, where we just want things to allow things to connect, where they where one light meets with another light. There should be no outline that um, there should be no lines at the end. We should only separate through tone. That way, you see, you see sort of the underlying um, abstraction. Then, which all good art is based on, fundamentally, on seeing an abstract pattern, um, just a pattern that's that's sort of separate from the objects that's being created by the objects, but it's its own entity. And so, um, by really simplifying down, and um, you know, just seeing light, dark, midtone, we can start getting at that. Almost hidden um, pattern or design that underlies underlies nature. So, um, uh, so this is what um, I will have you guys do um, in addition to the first exercise. Um, really important here again: keep things simple. It's going to be easier to get things to connect. Three values only.